This video was sponsored by Whitney Starnes with Miggy Vacations, an Academy Travel Affiliate. What's up guys, Shane Starnes here with Droid Modder X. Huawei has finally released the Mate 9 for the United States, which means that you're probably just now getting your device. Once you have set it up initially, there are several things that you can do with your phone to get the most out of your experience. I'm gonna show you guys the first 10 things that you should do with the Mate 9. Let's go ahead and get started. As you guys can see, the Mate 9 comes stock with Android Nougat, but it's running the eMUI software, which as you can see is more like iOS and the fact that it doesn't come stock with an app drawer. It's easy enough to solve this issue. Just go into settings, go into home screen style, and then you can actually just select drawer. So it's as simple as that. And now you'll notice that you do have an app drawer. The second thing you wanna do is set up your app lock settings. So you can actually lock anyone out of your applications. Uh, say you have something that has private personal information, or maybe you just wanna block people from being able to purchase applications off the Play Store. This works great for anyone that's handing their phone over to their child. Their kid won't be able to buy games without their knowledge. Uh, Basically, you're just gonna go into the phone manager and you're gonna scroll over to where it says app lock. All right, and then you'll just pick whatever application you wanna lock. Like say you don't want people to be able to gain access to your Facebook. We've all been Facebook hacked where you set your phone on a table and your friend goes and punches some really stupid comment under your name on your Facebook app. You can prevent that by locking down your Facebook app. So even if your phone is unlocked, they won't be able to access that individual application without your fingerprint, which is pretty amazing. Same thing can be done for the Play Store. That way people can't make purchases in the Play Store without your fingerprint. Now, if I try to access the Play Store, it's going to require a fingerprint scan in order for me to get in. Number three is setting up the eye comfort. So if we go into our settings and we go into our display, you see an option here called eye comfort. You can turn this on. What this does is it filters out blue light to relieve visual fatigue. So if you're like me, your eye twitches from time to time. It's just from looking at a screen for too long. This is actually able to relieve that visual fatigue. And this is definitely great for when you're getting ready to go to bed. It also can help you fall asleep a little faster. Number four is turning on the battery indicator. So it comes with a battery indicator already turned on, but if you want this percentage, uh, if you want the percentage readout, you actually have to turn that on yourself. So you can go into settings and you can go into battery. Then you can go all the way down to uh, remaining battery percentage. Go ahead and check that on. One really cool feature of this device is that it does include an IR blaster, which means it can be used as a remote control for your TV or even your cable box, but you do have to set that up. In order to set that up, you're just going to go into your app drawer and find the smart controller. And then from here, it'll actually walk you through setting it up to your TV. I've got mine set up to the Samsung TV. I'm able to power it on and off and also control my volume. And you can also add a controller. And as you guys can see here, you can control pretty much anything, a projector, camera, a set-top box, DVD player, and even an air conditioner. So one complaint with the EMUI software is the aggressive RAM management. It automatically shuts down applications that you are not currently using in order to optimize battery life or save battery life. You can adjust which apps are shut off automatically when you turn off the screen of which ones stay on. That feature is a little hidden. You're gonna go into settings. You're going to go into apps. Then you're gonna go into settings again. Then you're gonna go into special access. Then you're gonna go into exempt from battery optimization. From here, you're going to go down uh, to all apps and you'll see which are allowed and which are not allowed. So if we click on an application that is not allowed, it says don't allow, uh, which is recommended for better battery life, which means uh, when it's set to don't allow, it's gonna automatically shut down Facebook when it's not in use or when you turn your phone screen off. If you allow it, however, it will stay open in the background. This is great for if you're multitasking and you're going from app to app, you don't want the phone to shut down an application in order to save battery life if you're trying to go right back to it. So in that situation, if you do a lot of multitasking, jumping from app to app, you would want to make sure to allow any application that you might use when multitasking. The Mate 9 has this beautiful 5.9 inch display and it can be a little tricky to use one-handed. As you can see, it's very difficult for me to reach all the way to the top and I cannot reach all the way to the top left corner. You can actually set this phone up for one-handed use and to do so is pretty simple. You'll just go into your settings and then go down to smart assistance and go to the one-hand UI 
and you can turn on the mini screen view and also the shifting keyboard. Uh, once you turn on the shifting keyboard, you'll see that if you open up like say the dialer or the keyboard, it actually shrinks it down and moves it over to like where your thumb would be. The next thing you wanna do is go ahead and set up your do not disturb. Do not disturb allows your phone to go into complete silent mode at times when you're not gonna be paying attention to your phone. If you know that you go to sleep every night at 10 o'clock and you wake up every day at six o'clock, you really don't want your phone to be buzzing or ringing in the middle of the night waking you up. So that's why you would wanna make sure to go ahead and set up your do not disturb. Go into your settings, select the set do not disturb schedule, and then you can add rules here once you have it set up. If you go down to the do not disturb mode, it's set for alarms only by default, but you can actually go through here and allow for priority interruptions and then define the priority interruptions uh, this means that you can take calls from contacts only or you can actually set it uh, to whitelist only. When you set it to whitelist only or favorite contacts only, only those that are truly important to you that uh, you would want to answer in life or death situations would actually be able to ring through whenever you have your do not disturb mode set. The next thing you wanna do is set up your display size. With this beautiful 5.9 inch display, uh, you wanna be able to take full advantage of that. As you guys can see, our icons and everything are really big, but if you wanted to be able to load up that first screen with tons of icons and lots of widgets, you need to actually reduce the size of those icons and widgets. So to do that, you'll go into your settings, and then you'll go into display, and you'll go into view mode and you have options here for large, medium, or small. If you select small, once you select small, that's going once you select small, that will free up lots of space on your home screen for extra widgets and extra applications. You want to set up your nav bar. So it comes from stock with the back button to the far left, the home button in the middle, and the recents button on the far right. I'm coming from a Samsung device, so I'm actually used to the recents and back button being flip-flop. You can change that. To do so, you would go into settings, navigation key, and just simply press whatever layout you would like. And for me, I prefer the back button on the right side because I'm just used to that having used Samsung devices in the past. Before we get out of here, let's take one last look at our sponsor. Planning the perfect vacation can be a drag. Flights, hotel reservations, dinner reservations, and planning your park days can be a bit overwhelming for even a Disney expert. Let Whitney with Mickey Vacations take the stress out of your vacation planning plus gain access to any and all unadvertised discounts and specials. Whitney is an authorized Disney vacation planner. Mickey Vacations is earmarked platinum, meaning they are among Disney's most trusted travel planners. Follow the link below to book your Disney vacation today and receive a $25 Disney gift card with your completed booking when you mentioned that this channel sent you. So a few other less important settings that you can make here. I always like to make sure to uh, go ahead and set up my health. The reason being is this has a pedometer in the phone and it can track your steps. Why not just go ahead and track your steps? It's always neat to see how active you've been during the day and it can also provide a little sense of encouragement to increase your activity levels when you have days of maybe only 2,000 or 3,000 steps. So I always like to be sure to go ahead and activate it, at least turn it on. That way I can know what steps I've taken. And also once you turn this on, the lock screen will give you your steps taken as well. So you can see that any time of the day just by activating your lock screen. Okay, there's also a theme manager here. It only comes with a few themes which are pre-installed and I don't see an option. I've not been able to find an option to install more themes. I know with the Xiaomi phones, you're able to actually download more themes. It'd be nice to see Huawei incorporate an option to download more themes to your phone in the future. All right guys, that about wraps it up for the first 10 things that you should do on your Huawei Mate 9. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. You can find more of me at droidmoderx.com. Follow me on Twitter at droidmoderx. Thanks guys for watching, be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.